do. There is a freedom, but there is also an incredible effect of our choices. Our choices have an impact. We cannot say, I want the good side, but I don't want the bad side. You have to take it as it comes. So education means that <coughs> you want the good things, even if it is a difficult thing to achieve. And the false education is that which will give you the good things in a false variety. But then the bad things will come right after you. So jail, jail is that. You would think that the smartphone is a jail. Hmm? How many people become addicted to the gaming? Hmm? I mean, there's many types of jails. The drug addiction is a very bad jail. The, uh, the game or the, what do you call it, the gambling addiction is another big a real prison. Any obsession for something which is not good for you, it is kind, some kind of a jail. Even we have sugar addiction. Then we get some disease from that. So, the true education is that which enables you to choose what's good for you. <laughs> because education is not meant to take away your freedom. That would be against the nature. Durga is that way. So therefore Durga is very surprising. You want a golden jail? You don't. But there's many golden jails. Beverly Hills. <laughs> one time I saw one person in a golden jail. I was so wonderful. He was a sannyasi before. And somehow the sannyas was too big for him. So he had a chance to go to the United States. But when he went to the United States, in the United States, he had no visa. So he could not go out. So then he got a job by some very rich man. And that rich man, he put him into, a, into one of his mansions. And in these mansions, he had everything at his disposal. Everything you can dream of. Because a rich man, he didn't have time. He went there once a year for two days. But he was managing, he had two last model Mercedes cars at his disposal. He had swimming pools, playing rooms, everything even imaginable. It was always there at his disposal. Huh? Everything. So, but he could not go. And he was miserable. <laughs> he had everything money can buy at his full disposal. It wasn't his, but the owner didn't have it because he didn't have time to be there. So this is the golden jail. In this world, I've seen it. I visited him there. I preached to him. He says, I want to get out. And finally he got out. He gave up his U.S. visa because for people going, give, getting a U.S. visa is more or less like winning the lottery. Huh? <laughs> now I can live in America. American way of life. Huh? But it is very... There's a lot of conditions in this, uh, lots of difficulties in this. Anyhow, golden jail, copper jail, you can have any type of jail you want. Durga Devi is going to supply to you what you want to have. I mean, that's the way how the, the Supreme Lord's marvelous energy works. Savasya Shaktir Vivedaya Shruyate. Everything's coming from him. What do you want? You want the palace? You want an airplane? Like Salva? He had a palace which fly in the air? No? 
nowadays we have so many people they nowadays they even have Bhagavad Kata in the air. Have you heard that? Huh? One yogi was renting an airplane and he made Bhagavad Chaptaha flying around the world. And another one on a cruise boat. We have Bhagavad Kata on a cruise boat now. Have you heard that? Mm. So any type of thing you can get in this world. If you want to live under the water, then we can also give you a house under the water. Huh? If you want to go to the moon, then you will go to the moon. Hmm? Maybe not in this body, but somehow <laughs> the, you can go there, here and there. It is all options are open. And if you don't like this universe, there are plenty of universes. Don't worry about it. Just desire it and yip, you'll be transferred to any one of the infinite universes which are there. When Lord Brahma came to see Lord Krishna, the doorkeepers, they were asking him, who are you? He said, what do you mean who I am? I am Brahma. I'm the creator. And the doorkeepers went, okay, we will announce you. So after some time they came back, which Brahma are you? <laughs> what do you mean, which Brahma? Me, the one with the four heads. <laughs> Okay, went in again and said, okay, you can come, the Lord will receive you. So then he went and he offered his obeisance, my Lord. Then after that he said, my Lord, I have one question. When you asked which Brahma is there, do you mean to say there are some other Brahmas? The Lord said, oh, you don't know. <laughs> Wait a second. He says, please call all the Brahmas from all the universes. And they were coming flying in on the swans from everywhere. And some had 16 heads, 32 heads, <laughs> millions of heads. The Brahmas were coming and little Brahma with four heads was coming. <laughs> he became like an ant in front of an elephant. I mean, can an elephant, can an ant even see an elephant? What is that thing which is coming there, you know? So, macrocosmos, Durga's kingdom, what do you want? You want to be a blonde girl, or you want to be <coughs> uh, black hair, you want to be Miss Universe? Can you imagine you get the title Miss Universe? <laughs> Durga provides everything. Or you can become the richest man in the world. You can be overnight, sometimes become very rich the people. And they can also become very poor overnight. It also happens. So Durga is giving us all these options, showing us everything. There's no limit to Durga's objects, but everything is changed. And then Bhagavad Gita and Srima Bhagavatam come and tell us about liberation. Saloka Shashti Samipya Sarupya Gatman Idiota. There's five types of liberations you can achieve. But then it says that the, the pure devotees they reject the liberations. They only want love, unconditional love. Because Salokya means living with Lord Vishnu on one planet, Vaikuntha, Sharshti, having opulence like him, Sarupya, to have a form with four arms like him, Samipya, to have his personal company, all these things. Or oh, Aikatvam, you can become one with his energy. All these five liberations are offered in the Vedas. But the devotee, he don't want this. The devotee doesn't even want it Swarga. What do you think about Swarga? Good place to go? You think so? With Indra. <laughs> you can have there a nice palace. Maybe next to Indra. Maybe he makes us a minister in Swarga. Good place to go? You think so. <laughs> but then you forget 
then Hiranyakashipu will come and he will say, finished Indra, now I am in charge. And you Indra, you become my personal servant. And when Indra is trying to do some service for Hiranyakashipu, <coughs> and Hiranyakashipu, you stupid Indra, you don't even know how to arrange the bed. <coughs> come on, behave yourself. So Indra, and sometimes Indra, he's, he's uh, cursed. Rihashpati is cursing Indra. You still want to go there? Are you sure? Huh? There's many things can happen in, in Svarga, Indra Loka. Many times the, the Asuras always attacking the, 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 the Devas. Yes. So your choice. You can do all the tapasya, you can do all the all the preparation steps for going there. What about mystic yoga powers? Is that good? Yeah? Anima Siddhi. Nagima Siddhi. There's eight yogic powers. They are also offered in the in the catalogue of of achievements can control the mind of others. You can become invisible. You can travel. You can achieve any object from anywhere in the universe and bring it here to you. Telekinesis, telepathy, all these type of mental powers. Makala, you want to have those? <laughs> huh? Yes? <laughs> See, Krishna has a big clientele, no? Yes, everything is here. Gardini, you want to have those mystic powers? <laughs> well, Gopakumar did not want any of this. And Kolavecha Shrida, he was a devotee from Mayapur. He was an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Lord Chaitanya offered mystic power to him, he said, no, Mahaprabhu says, why not? Oh, I will become confused, I will become puffed up. I don't want this. Then Mahaprabhu said, okay, go to Swarga, be there uncountable time for joy no. because at the end it will be finished Swarga Abrahma Viva Nalu Kapu Rama Bhakti No Juna he says everything is temporary in this world so I, there will be an end then I will lose it so I don't want I don't want to get anything which I will lose after What's the use of having something if you will have to lose it? If you have to go through the pain, through the agony of heart. So therefore, in the so many options which we have in this material world, we have to see what is the best thing for us. What is really the, the highest and most inspiring motivation for us to go ahead with our efforts. And that is the education which we get from the Bhagavad Gita and from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Savaipum sang paror damob yator bhaktir adokshaye ahaituki apratihata yayatma suprasidati. Who knows the translation of this verse? <laughs> in Spanish, no, in English. Okay. This process is um, practice, this, this spiritual process is practice. This uh, paradharma, this uh, eternal dharma, is practiced with uh, joy. Uh, let, let me let me try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
The highest dharma, Savai Pusamparo Dharma, is that which brings about the inclination for unconditional and uninterrupted service to the Supreme Lord. That is the highest dharma. That which there will no more <coughs> negotiations, no more conditions. I just want to please you, my Lord. So Kolaveja Shrida, he was offered mystic powers, he said no. He was offered Swarga, he said no. He was offered liberation, Moksha, he said no. Finally, the Lord became frustrated. Lord Chaitanya said to him, Hey, Kolavecha, I'm trying to give you the best things they are, and you say no, 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 no. It is my desire to give you a boon, to give you a, a gift. Can you please tell me something you want? Did you know what he chose? You know that story? Kola Vecha Srida said, My dear Lord, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and you appear in different places around the creation. It is my desire that wherever you are, I will be your supplier of bananas, banana flowers, and banana leaves. I want to be your banana suppliers eternally. And this Kolavecha Srida, his Samadhi Mandir is right after the Yoga Pit. A little up there, or close to the Jagannath Mandir. It's a bit far away. But he has to come and bargain. Huh? He has to come and bargain. Oh, yes. The, the, the su Supreme Lord, he will come and say, I want, I want cheaper. You are charging too much. Anyway, that is one story of Chaitanya Charitamrita. <laughs> Unconditional service. Unconditional service. Uninterrupted service. Not, today I'm your servant, tomorrow I forget about you. No, you get your service and you do your service and you continue even though difficult times come, you still continue with your service. And then there will be a very wonderful fruit of that service, which is the divine grace or the highest love. So therefore, in this prison of this material world, we need that education which will encourage us to go for the highest destination. A prisoner in this world, <coughs> He went for the lowest destination. Easy. Easy, I want to get success. <clears throat> and then he had to come in front of a judge. Said, you did that? Yes, I did. Three years behind the bars. Three years locked up? Yes. Because you are public danger. You have to learn your lesson. So in this way, we are born in this material world, in the prison. Some people are born in a golden prison, some people are born in an iron prison. And then we want to find who is going to educate us, who is going to give us the freedom. Now, there is one element in this connection which is very important, which is called Shraddha. Shraddha means faith. Shraddha is a gift. It is a gift from above, from the higher domain. Actually, Shraddha Devi is another name of Sri Mataradara. She is the one who gives you faith that Krishna's pleasure should be first, not your pleasure. We have that feeling because we get everything and we are not happy. What does it mean? Everything money can buy, I can have. Bring it to me. I don't have to even go out. 
I just ordered online. And then here I go to do, 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 here, this, I want this. And then two days later, somebody comes to my door. I brought you this package, which you ordered. Wow, very convenient, no? But I can have all these things. I can buy everything money can buy, and I will not be happy. Ah, it's terrible. It's a terrible frustration, which we experience, experience in this material world. Why? Why we are not happy when we have everything? That is the big question. I mean, if you, if the goal of life would be get a car and be happy forever driving around the world, well, then everybody should get a car and be happy, right? There's so many cars are driving around and nobody's happy. <laughs> So obviously that wasn't the, the thing we have to get. It's nothing you can buy. And, and when you think, if I buy this item, then I will be happy, <clears throat> then you're in illusion. But when you bought the item and you're not happy, then your illusion is destroyed. That's really frustrating. If you want to see what that looks like, you have to go into a shop of antiquities. Antiques. I'm sure you have shops like this also in Calcutta. Antique shops. So then you can go in there the fancy things people dreamt of and they got and then they sold it for nothing. Now it's an old antique stop, shop full of dust uh, and all kinds of stuff which people accumulated and which did not make them happy. Now you go and buy something in the antique shop, it's like you're chewing on an old chewing gum. Somebody else has chewing before, he didn't like it, now you can go on chewing it. <laughs> so that's what the antique shops are all about, chewing the chewed uh, of the others. And the Bhagavad Gita also mentioned this. this. This material life is like chewing the chewed. And it's actually, a re it is in reference to sex life. Sex life is also chewing the chewed. That which has been chewed for millions of times, by millions of species, by millions of people, you want to chew it also. Let me chew a little bit. You chew it. I mean, you chew it. It's not that you have never chewed it. We have all chewed the chewed for so many times, and there's no way that you will have fulfillment that way. Not by money, not by drugs, not by gambling, not by sex life, no. There's no way you're going to get the happiness in this world. But you have to learn it the hard way, or you can learn it by listening. Now, <coughs> education means learning by listening. Mm. So let us listen what the Bhagavatam says. What good advice we get for this higher taste. Hearing from Arjuna about the disappearance of the Yadus and the Lord's attaining his abode, Kunti became absorbed in the Lord with pure devotion and disappeared from the pastimes in this world. This is tough. Queen Kunti disappears thinking of Krishna. After Krishna and the Yadus disappeared from this world, Queen Kunti wanted to be. This describes her method of disappearing. Samsvite means 
from moving clearly from the appearance of past times in this world. She suddenly disappeared. Upadarama. Or the move, moment she heard the news, <coughs> she showed the condition of an aged person inactive because of the separation from the Lord. Regarding both <coughs> burdens equally, the Lord separated himself from that portion of the Yadus by which he removed the burden of the earth like removing a thorn with another thorn. conclusion is presented to pacify Shonaka and the sages who were in grief on hearing about the final condition of the Yadus. By that body consisting of the Yadus in the form of the Devatas, he removed the burden of the earth, Bhuva, which arises from the Lord, like removing a thorn with the tip of another thorn, and then gave up that body. It is like saying, Devadatta give up his gave up his cloth. He's, he let that body fall away from his presence. This verse does not say he gave up the body of the Yadavas by which the, he performs eternal pastimes. That means this, the Devatas at the time of appearing with the Lord in the Angsa forms entered into the eternal form belonging to the Yadavas. Separating from those eternal forms by the power of yoga when they went to Prabhasa, they after drinking liquor, were made to attain swarga with the forms of devatas by the Lord, who showed to the world that they had given up bodies by the power of Maya. This is according to the explanation of the 11th canto. The Yadavas, who were eternally associates of the Lord, disappeared from the sight of the world, but remained in pastimes with Krishna in the same Dwaraka as before. This is understood from Bhagavatam Ritam conclusion. The two burdens, the burden to the earth in the form of the demons and the burden in the form of devatas who had entered the form of yadavas were regarded as the same by the Lord Ishitum Saman. However, in the example though, the thorns are equal the tip of the thorn as the instrument. It is an eternal portion under the Lord's influence acting as an assistant to the Lord's pastime. The other thorn, the object of action, though also acting as an assistant of the Lord's pastimes, is the external portion under the influence of Maya. Amarakosha says, Suchiagrik Shudra Sotro Chalo Maharshe Chakantaka Kantaka means a tip of a needle, an insignificant enemy, hair standing on end. This is a pretty difficult subject to understand. But one thing is clear, we all have to die. One way or another we have to die. One way or another we are here giving, giving examples or seeing the examples. Nobody can get away from the reality of Janmadhyas Yayataha, being born, existing, and disappearing. So 
we are here preparing ourselves by, sh by reading the educational gifts which we have gotten from Srima Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Now we want to help others and give them an idea that they are not this body. But the greater majority of these people in this world, they are so much obsessed with the different things that they are not paying attention to Vedic wisdom. Okay? Then they have to undergo the repeated birth and death. We don't know for how many times we have already been born and already have died in this world. But one thing is a fact. Here we are. And another fact is soon we are going to die. So here we learn by thinking of Krishna, like Kunti, she heard about that. She gave up this material form and went to the spiritual world. And that's what we are after. We want to think of Krishna that in the moment of death you will simply go to Krishna and not go to another prison cell. Huh? Not to say, can you please, please improve my prison cell, my Lord? Is there any better self for me? No. Because whatever cell you're in, you will always lament and you will always have to repeat the same thing again and again. Therefore, our spiritual teachers have given us the clear information that we do not belong into this world. And this world, or the things of this world, they do not belong to us. You see how much property problems we have, how much anxiety we face about having or not having. It is all simply a lesson. Take it, return it, take it, return it, take it, return it, take it. No, 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 I don't want to return it. Yeah, you do return it. And you take again. Return it, take it, return it, take it, return it, take it, return it. It's a dance. And are you taking or are you returning? I don't like the returning. I don't like the taking. So then take. But now I have too much. Return. So like this the whole life's going on. One time, one person made my astrological chart. Actually, that person, I didn't ask him to do that. And it's actually prohibited for an astrologer to make the chart of somebody if he's not asked to. It's not like you have a right to meddle into other people's <coughs> life. But that astrologer, he did that. He made my astrological chart. And he sent the message to me. According to that astrological chart, I was going through a period of losing. So, when I was told, hmm, I'm losing. Very interesting. Then, all of a sudden, it dawned upon me. But I took sannyas. I took the renounced all of life. I already gave up everything, so what the heck am I going to lose? <laughs> There's nothing left. So why, why should I worry about losing? <laughs> So, a way not to lose is to give everything away. That is the secret which we learned from the city of joy. I think we also would call Dominique Lepierre wrote this famous book and in the introduction he says 
everything which you do not give away, that is what you are going to lose. I love this so much because it's really a sannyas, sannyas way. Give away everything, give it away. Because if I give something away and I can make you happy by doing so, I can make, give somebody some momentary f happiness, he may receive my gift, that gift will stay with me forever. But if I keep it, I'm going to lose it. And when I lose it, it's properly going to pain me. Most likely. That's why we are so attached to different things. It is a disease to be attached. Can you believe it that some people are attached to even the garbage? I have been in people's houses not many times three times in my life, they could not give up every, anything. They even kept the old soda cans. Because it's all, well, maybe, maybe we can sell it as a big amount of aluminum. Everything they kept, they were like, so attached. And inside the house, you could hardly move because everywhere was done. Huh? You could just get to the toilet and to the bed and to the kitchen. Everything was packed with items. Different degrees of obsessions. <sighs> packed. But in the end you lose it all. And when you lose it means when you have to give it up, when you go. Then all these things become nothing. So gold. Everybody likes gold. I mean, not everybody, but it looks nice, no? Nice shining. Huh? But the gold, it is an energy. It's always there. Like, usually the people don't throw away the gold, no? So the gold is there in this form or that form. Nowadays, we have a very strong movement which says, keep the gold in the ground and keep your water clean. Because when they take out the gold from the earth, usually they, they make a big mess. So the gold is there and it will always be there. It's an energy of the Lord. Why are you worried about gold? I have all the gold in the world. It's mine. What do you think about that? I don't have to see it. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to smell it. And it doesn't taste anyway. <laughs> but all the gold in the world is mine. Am I crazy? Or am I right? What is your opinion, Rodrigo? Hmm? <laughs> All the gold in the world is mine. Is it true or is it wrong? You have to prove it. You cannot only say yes or no, you have to prove it. Why is it true or why is it wrong? Anybody? Yes. Yes? You say all the gold is mine. We are son of Mother Earth, and that property belong to my mother. So I am his son. So the gold is also mine because I am his son. That was exactly the answer I wanted. Only you used the, the mother. I was thinking of the father, the supreme Lord who created all these things. And I am his son, so <laughs> father. But I want to see the green. I don't want to see the green. I can imagine you're living in a gold world. Gold trees, gold.